This is Brenda Busher from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I'm outside at the Grand Floridian on a beautiful Disney morning. I'm hanging out with my dad this weekend. We're on a father-daughter long weekend trip. We love to go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. Enjoy the show. Hey, Brenda Busher, great Father's Day message there on your introduction, and welcome, geeks. This is Curtis Stone, and this is episode 462 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. Yeah, it's Father's Day weekend. I'm having a great weekend myself. Got the day off tomorrow, too. This week on the podcast, we got a huge geek meet. Disney World Roundtable. It's featuring Samantha Kuhn, Rebecca Rudin, Scott Daves, Karen Daves, Tony Anzarcone, Daniel Ginger, Jen Moynihan Wynn, Andy Hoffman, Bubba Mack, Amanda Lamb, and Selena Roll, at least for now. This is part one. This is an over two hour episode I recorded before my vacation, which I just got back from. And also guest hosting with me will be Wendy Fox and Auntie Judy. This is a review of a trip they did with about 30 geek and friends from the podcast. And I've been having fun chatting with Disney World fans and geeks like these guys for over eight years. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, talking about our Disney World trips. And we brought on you Disney geeks to tell your trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, they're generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. And you'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real-world experiences and trip reports. And we do encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast. Before too long, they were calling me the Podfather. And we'd love for you also to join our Geekin family. We have an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW Family. That's a great place to ask your questions, share your trip pictures, and engage with one of the best group of Disney World geeks out there on the internet. We're also independent Disney authorized travel agents with Fairy Tale Concierge. Fairy Tale Concierge is an authorized Platinum Disney travel agency, and we'd love to be your travel guides and help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. Boy, mom's been busy ever since we got back from our vacation. I guess there were some annual pass discounts, and she's applying those to all of our clients that have booked with the Traveling Tierras. When you're ready to book your trip, just contact mom and auntie Judy traveling Tierras at Gmail is their email. Check out the show notes on my website or on the podcast app that you listen to the show and you'll see our emails and we'd love for you to reach out to us. Yeah, this is going to be a two hour show, but I'm going to give you just about an hour of it. First of all, it's a lot of fun. It's featuring a bunch of our geeks, like I mentioned already, and we're going to talk a lot about food on this hour of this podcast. I asked them their three food highlights from their trip where there's like 30 of their friends all together. It's like this mini G3 event. I'm so fun to have them all on the show in a big Zoom call. So here's a sampling of what you're going to hear. Haleo, Skipper Canteen, the Decadent Corn on the Cob, Boma Breakfast, the Nomad Lounge, Steakhouse 71, Gico, La Cellier, Yak and Yeti, Plight Pig, Brown Derby, San Angel Inn, some of the food booths for Flower and Garden, the Veggie Lobster Roll. Oh, big controversy. I'm going to be talking about that in my trip report and hopefully have a debate with my good friend, Glenn Kessler, who sent me after that. And Bubba Mack talks about it on this show. The love of the Gideon's cookies, even some Spice Road table. This is probably the biggest trip report roundtable I've ever hosted. It sure can be a lot of fun when you go to Disney World with a bunch of your Disney World geek friends. Well, I had a bunch of FOMO recently when a bunch of my friends went down to Disney World. Matter of fact, I had a, a lot of mixed emotions. It was rough watching all my friends go down to Disney World. But besides being a little bit jealous, I was quite happy to see them all together and all the pictures. And even when they FaceTimed me into a couple of rides. So I'm really excited 
to do a big roundtable trip report from the big geek meet that this gang, I think I got like half of them here on the show. So I'm going to get it started kicking off with Samantha Kuhn. Hey, Samantha. Hi. Hey, Samantha. Hey, geeks. Hey, Kurt. <laughs> Hi, friends. I missed you guys in the uh, last week. I'm going to go in the order that we... I see you on Zoom, so I'm going to do my best to keep this organized tonight, but I think I've got like 11 of you guys that went on the trip and a couple of extras who are, are going to help us host this show today, but Samantha and the rest of you guys, I got a couple of questions. We're going to talk about if you had anything like really fun at the resort, some kind of interesting story, I want to hear about that, and then we're going to do three yummy things that you ate on the trip because we always got to talk about food. So if you got a list of three, and if you want to cheat a little bit, you know, I'm not going to say anything. And then if you got any really interesting stories from this trip, and I'm sure you do, and I know there's an itinerary of some of the activities that you did too, so we'll talk We'll talk through that. But Samantha, I don't know, was there anything, where did you stay? Is there anything interesting from the where you stayed this trip? So we stayed in a two-bedroom at Animal Kingdom Lodge. It wasn't interesting, it's just it's always fun when we get in big sorority house rooms together. How many were in the <laughs> sorority house this time? There was five of us this time. All right. Who was it? So Rebecca and I were in one room. Tony Ann and Noreen were in the second room. And then Trey took our couch. Rebecca and I kept poor Trey up at night with our giggle fests in our room. So that was, that was a fun moment. I woke up the next morning and I come out and I asked Trey, how'd you sleep? He said, fine. And I was like, even with us giggling all night, he goes, oh, no, I had to wait for you two to stop giggling to fall asleep. <laughs> and that like gives me something time. else to look forward to in December. <laughs> that was part of why we were giggling, thinking about you <laughs> having to share a room with us. <laughs> we first started giggling about what we started giggling about in February. And we both just at the same time started giggling to ourselves mm -hmm. and said, are you giggling about what I'm giggling about? <laughs> And sure enough, we were. Uh, Rebecca, you were saying you had some fun times over at Animal Kingdom. You stayed over at the, the lodge before? Or this was Kidani? Where were you? Yeah, we were at Kidani. I've definitely stayed there before. But on Friday, while everyone was having fun, I had to work. So I sat down at Sanaa Lounge, and I had an excellent waitress. Her name was Stephanie, I believe. And she was really helpful. She helped Wendy get some drinks at our flat. Wendy get some drinks at the lounge. And none of the plugs were working. And she actually called an electrician in to fix everything so that I could sit there and work and drink and had bread service all day while everyone else was at Magic Kingdom. Wow, I got real FOMO because I was working remotely in my studio office here, not at Sanaa Restaurant. That's a best a real good deal. And do you think the office. she had only been working for like two weeks or something? Oh, yeah. She told me she was only two weeks out of training, but she was mm. probably one of the best cast members I've encountered. She like went above and beyond and was doing whatever she could to make me happy while I was sitting there. Wendy, did you enjoy your drink at Sanaa? I guess I did. What did I have, Rebecca? <laughs> she forgot we already. We had some Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, then, well, I, that I was assured would come home to the room, and it did not. We so. also had a spiked coffee. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Good. Now, I'm going in order that they show up here on my Zoom. I have a question for Samantha. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Samantha, is this? Uh, didn't you have something special brought in for breakfast? During oh, we did. I'm sure we'll get to that. We did that on Saturday morning okay. for Denver Day. We had um, a breakfast ordered from someone off the Ear for Each Other Facebook page. And that was definitely like a highlight of the weekend for me. It was just a lot of fun. Us. It was like really, it kind of brought me back to like my college days of all of us, like getting ready in a room together for our night out, which is really a, a day at Epcot dressed as Alice in Wonderland characters. <laughs> well, the funniest thing with that breakfast is you were FaceTiming me in and I'm watching and Samantha is in charge of the bacon. I'm like, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Was the one that was cooking that? <laughs> Vegetarian? I laid yeah. out all the waffles, I think, and I was like, okay, somebody else has got to handle this because I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I think 
Noreen stepped in. That's right. Okay. Noreen took care of everybody yeah. that we yes. Yeah. She she steamed everybody's clothes. Mm-hmm. She she organized the breakfast food. She cleaned yeah. up. She was the mom. She was the house mom. <laughs> she really yeah. she was. I'm sorry, house. She's amazing. <laughs> Let me ask She's this to the whole group. Was there anything at the resort, any stories or interesting aspects to the resort that you guys can report on before we move on to food? I just I just wanted to tell everyone that we a lot of us had trouble getting into the room with our magic bands. So Trey and I went to the front desk and the cast member fixed it. He he had to prioritize the bands we had with us. It, apparently they said he said we both had more than 30 bands and when you get that many bands it just it has a hard time yes. so so if you should dump any old bands you're not using anymore that's always a good thing to do but even i've done that i've weeded out but i still have ones i like that i want to use and he said um if you ever have that problem, you need, you can go to the desk and they'll prioritize your bands. <laughs> That's a great tip, Tony, Ann, because mom and I, of course, had that problem. And yeah, it, it really messes with the Disney IT when you've got, I, we just learned the the number is 30. So all my geeks who have 30 magic bands on their that, account. He just said, you have more, man, you have more than 30. I don't know if 30, if that's the magic number. But that's what he said. Sounds like, it sounds about right, though. <laughs> I had a great place. Um, I we built uh, Kandani Village is our home resort, and we've stayed there twice before. And we were always in the Savannah view. This time, since it was a short reservation notice, we couldn't get to Savannah, so we were standard. But luckily, we got right a room on the top floor, watching the Sally Port of the entrance, which was very, very interesting because you saw people coming for the first time and all happy and yeah. glory. And then you also saw the ones that are getting on the huh. buses to leave that were kind of, you know, moping around and stuff. So it was really nice to kind of have that, that, that view instead of the Savannah view yeah. that we've always had, ah. have that view of the people coming and going. Oh, great perspective, Daniel. I you're like show, that. You're showing your police officer's side, Daniel. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it a sound report. <laughs> you know, and we also got to see uh, Samantha and, um, yeah, and we Rebecca had the coming too. Yeah, we had amazing welcome party when we pulled up Just, in our Uber. Yep, Daniel and Nora were walking there. by. I said, Daniel and Nora. And so we saw them. <laughs> Yep. And then we were standing in the lobby, getting ourselves organized, and Bubba and Lauren walked by to head out, and so Rebecca yelled, Lauren! <laughs> so, so within, like, 15 minutes of being there, we saw four of our friends. That makes me think, Samantha, you know, we're not that far removed from the G3 with over 100 people, but you guys had, how many you think were down there total for this big geek meet? We ended up with 28, I oh. think was four. So you you had some serendipitous meetings and seeing people hanging around even then when you didn't have meetups. That's pretty cool when you just have twenty eight people. Just that's a pretty big number. <laughs> Very cool. All right, we got Tony and Zarcone here from the Disney Crush podcast. Hello. Hey, Tony Ann. Hey. What's going on? How you feeling? I'm feeling okay. You I'm sound feeling real good now. Yeah, I'm back at work now. So I'm so glad to hear mm-hmm. you. You did get a little bit of the Disney crud, which is a typical thing that we used to get all the time when we went to Disney World. It wasn't the Disney crud. It was the big. It was the big one. <laughs> the big stink. <laughs> yeah, it was the un- great unpleasantness. Yeah, the which, it, it took me two years to get the great unpleasantness. <laughs> well, so glad to hear you are. I mean, you've been a trooper. You and I recorded on. Another podcast, the Monorail Tales. Yeah, last the Thursday. Last, yeah, uh-huh. recently too. Well, uh, oh, Michael just came in. Michael, oh, Michael. Well, uh, he's, watch, watch, he's watching Muppets Take Manhattan, so he's saying, "Woman, woman." <laughs> says, "This is Michael's moment from the Disney Crush podcast," and he walked away. Thanks, buddy. Well, uh, he'll be back. I'm he'll, sure. Maybe he'll be back. <laughs> so Tony, I want you to kick off the food. Well, you got well, any well, three well, fun. Well, 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 well. <laughs> we might be talking about Michael's ice cream moment. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> any good food experiences on this trip, Tony Ann? Um, I was I was really I was really happy 
to, to take everybody to Haleo. It was, some of us have been there already, but a lot of people, it was their first time. And as somebody who had been there a few times, I was kind of able to ne- help people figure out the menu a little bit. And I think other people will probably talk about it, but the way we did it was really smart. There were eight of us at our table and Samantha just told everybody, make a list of like, she made the list, say what, if something interests you. And then, um, we ordered, you know, <laughs> what interested people. And I don't know how many plates we had total. I, I have the list. We ended up with 15 plates total for eight people. So that feels right. kind of the right number for tapas. Right. So, and we all shared and some people liked one thing more than another thing, but it was great. And it really wasn't that expensive. It, other, uh, it, just the food itself, drinks we paid for separately. On our own. The food, the food came to $34 a person. Oh, so nice. it wasn't it wasn't crazy, and I think everybody left satisfied. I don't know about Norma. Daniel will have to speak to that. Norma, she, she said that the food just kept on coming and coming <laughs> and coming, and she's not a big eater. So, but she's like, "Oh my god, food, more food, more food." She'd rather see the drinks keep on coming and coming. So, where would you guys? I'm really interested in this because this has been kind of a geek and trend, and from the G3, the small plates theme mm-hmm. is seems to be happening. Where would you rank this? I was really jealous, actually, see that picture you guys suck. <laughs> like, I was just like, wow, this looks like really fun, but all the food options. So tell me, where is this rank with you, Tony Ann? For me, when you're talking about the small plates, I think they do it best. I think they do yeah. it best there. This I is think down it's, at it's Disney Springs, so Halela. What's it yeah. called? Haleo. Haleo. J- J-A-L-E-O. That's my favorite. And then um, we did Spice Road Table on Saturday. A bunch of us did Spice Road Table, and I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, yeah the, the small plates are the, are the thing. I mean, we have to talk about the fact that we went to uh, San Angelin, and it, which is the pyramid one, yeah. and had the – what we what we call what we call the ridiculous dessert, which is the big pyramid 50th anniversary cake. All right, is that, mm-hmm. is that all no. you had there? That's we had at our table. At our table, we had cake and and alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so Deanne, what what kind of food did they have at Leo? It's tapas. So it's, I mean, what, for what what? So we is it Mediterranean or, or it's what? Spanish. It's Spanish. So uh, when we sat down, I told Samantha, it's very goat cheese forward, the menu. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of goat cheese. So, that, so we had, we had um, I'm just trying to think some of the things we had. We had the, the bread, the crusty bread with the tomato. We had goat cheese with stuffed red peppers, roasted red peppers. We had, um, endive. oh, Jen, Jen and I love the endive with the goat yes. cheese and the, and oh the oranges. Chorizo. Um, there was, I love chorizo. There was chorizo. There was a spreadable sausage, which was a little the, interesting. The chicken croquettes. Oh, the chicken croquettes mm, on the really pillow. Nice. Yeah, I mean, but, I don't want to. I don't want to be the only one to talk about it. So, so I'll let other people. But there, my we had favorite a lot of part of that things. meal was showing our list to the waiter and saying, "Do you think this is going to be enough food for us?" And he was like, "Um." <laughs> That's a good amount of food. <laughs> You're good. Okay. You're good to go. I, You're I have two questions. Us for how much we're ordering. Because I didn't go to that. Right. So did you have the old ham? We did we not. Didn't, we didn't have the old ham. No, no old ham. Okay. And then, so spreadable sausage, is that like liverwurst? <laughs> I think it was a chorizo. I think it was, chorizo. It was, it was a chorizo. chorizo yes. <laughs> but I mean, like that kind of consistency. No, it was no. not like pate. Like it was kind of like sausage out of the casing. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was pretty good. Uh, it had a lot of spices you. on it. Um, yeah. I was surprised. I didn't think I was going to like it, um, but it was quite good. It was very flavorful. It had a lot of really good spice. Samantha, did I forget any of the good ones? I mean, I said I know we had this. You had There's a, fish. a bunch of things on here I cannot pronounce, and I'm not going to try to on this podcast. So there was a fish dish. There was the other sh- things. There was the shrimp. There was, was shrimp. Shrimp, that you, shrimp that looked at you. Shrimp that looked at you. In the shrimp yeah. with the heads. Those were good. <laughs> and, and, I think, had heads. and I think Daniel will say that this the calamari actually it. exceeded. The, the Space 220 calamari that he thought was the best. Space 220, yes. It did. 
Wow, that's exciting. That because that was wow, Daniel. Was, well, yes. Well, you know, I'm going to move on to. Dan- well, I have one other question for that. Did they have frozen lime margaritas at this Spanish tapas place? No. They're known for their sangria and their gin. And their gin. Yes, their gin. Yeah. Was delicious. Yeah. Sangria was delicious. Right. <laughs> well, margaritas really, aren't Spanish. Really like no. Sangria. No. Oh, no okay. it's, it's, it's different every last uh, every last drop of that sangria you got in there. Uh, right. yeah. I think she was like upside down in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing you have to. This is Spanish, not Mexican. This is not spicy food. This is. Yeah. I was, it's more, it's more I was trying to be funny. It's more Mediterranean. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, then Tony in, you were happy because you had gin. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I had a real, I had the best gin and tonic gin, I think I've ever had in my Tony life. Tony yeah. Ann likes the wow. gin and tonics at Disney yeah. World. Mm-hmm. And Wendy, you were a big hit with our waiter. He asked if he could have his picture taken with you. We do <laughs> I have all that thing. Yay. <laughs> way to go, Wendy. Way. Yeah. All right, let's bring on Daniel Ginger. Hello. Hey, Each. Daniel. Hello. So, you and Norma were there together. You got there early. I remember seeing pictures of you guys. You fl- where'd you fly through? Like we New went York? to New York first. I thought I saw we're that. Stay at that Sam and Rebecca didn't come see us. I like, waved. Uh, <laughs> you were and close then we to me. We flew to Florida. Yes. Yeah, and so to give me three yummy things you ate on this trip. Well, one thing was kind of mentioned. I love I love chorizo. I could cook up a whole tube of chorizo and just put it between two fajitas and eat it and put salsa. I love it. That caught my ear when Tony oh, yeah. Ann was saying so that. So I love that. That's great. I think I would love. I'm really jealous of this place now. I know. You know. I, Good. I'm. I've been to a lot of the Disney restaurants, but this is one I've not been to. And this is one you want to be to with all your friends too. Oh, definitely. Right. Because yes. then Very you can share you a whole bunch it. of different foods. Kurt, you, you never convinced Ragita to go there? Um, I don't know. It's it's not it's not Spice Road table, so maybe. Yeah. Does she like cheese? There's a lot of cheese variations. Yes. Yeah. She's a huge <laughs> cheese fan. All right, Daniel. So it's your time. Tell me okay. what some of your favorites. So I'm going to throw out the cheese that we were talking about that. So I'm really huge on Skipper Canteen. I really enjoy. Yeah, what's up with this two times the Skipper Canteen it's, according to it's the itinerary? Amazing. And uh, I don't know. I didn't get to go the second time because we were trying to find something for our, our grandson who's having a, had a one, one year old birthday. So we had to go run to Disney Springs. So we missed the second one, but we <laughs> went that first day at a Disney, at a Magic Kingdom. And I love it. In that Brazilian cheese bread, we got lucky because <laughs> we at first asked for it. And he was like, What? What are you talking about? And, uh, it's, you know, but I think. It was a, maybe Andy was really important. Said, "Yeah, you know." And so we got Brazilian cheese bread. So it's really nice. You know how many times that has come up on my podcast? The Brazilian cheese bread at Good Skipper stuff. Canteen. Wow, we all got to get there. Was the server messing with you, or what, did he seriously not know what it was? I think he was messing with us. Like, oh, what is that? It's a, <laughs> we had to be a little, you know. It was kind of hit, annoying. Hit. Yes. Yeah. And we said, don't mess with us because we know that this is not always available. (laughs) Don't even with us. You want to see us protest in this place? (laughs) <laughs> very good all um, right and i like the I, I, I like that new i'm not sure what it's called but it's the blue moon it had some type of I, oh yeah i can't shandy. remember the blue moon drink shandy. it's awesome it was what the shandy so good shandy, that was it yeah mm-hmm. oh, really it, it really was yeah. good yeah yes tell I me what that is because i heard this recently too and it's like blue moon that has like some I don't pineapple know, in it, pineapple or something like that yeah. in there, and it's okay. there's something else in there besides just pineapple. So it's basically yeah. a beer with yes. fruit in it, but yeah. it's really refreshing. It's really I, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's almost like a mixed drink. Quenches your thirst. They're, they're tricking. They're 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 cheating on the Magic Kingdom. Well, <laughs> <it's good>. rules. <laughs> well, no, you're sit, we're sitting down. But <laughs> it, first time I got it. Well, first time. I had a sangria and then I got that. I was like, oh, I'm getting that every time now. Nice. <laughs> but Definitely, I guess me too. they don't really allow mixed drinks in the Magic Kingdom at all, right? Not really. No, I don't think there's no hard liquor, right? Right. So they're mm-hmm. so it's it's almost yes, like not- a little a little way to kind of get a kind of fancy drink in there. <laughs> yep. Nice. But the Our- Skipper Canteen is a is an added bonus to the day at Magic Kingdom. A big favorite of ours. Huge. Everybody from this podcast. I think be. they should put a, 
Just the Crutch <laughs> Mickey Fowl logo on the door or something yeah, like that. It's the new lounge of Magic lounge. Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe I can get them to sponsor the podcasts. There you go. All the podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> All of our podcasts. All right, Daniel, give me one more. Um, well, I got two more real quick. I got the the corn on the cob at nice. Animal Kingdom. Well I done. love that stuff. Um, I saw even the though picture. I'm an Iowa boy. And, Where is Bubba? And nothing can be Iowa corn. Corn on the cob at Animal Kingdom. I, think Jen, I thought I saw a picture with Jen and Bubba. I don't know. I didn't see you, Daniel, yeah, in that picture. Cobs. That's right. That's right. Blink. Cubs. That's what life is all about. The spices they put on that is amazing. That's on my list too, and it doesn't matter that it's mm. Duncan's butter. All right, what is what is the it's deal with the corn? I mean, it's just we're, corn we're on the cob. On the, on We've all had corn on the cob before. I mean, it just, it's a staple. It's the way they cook it, and then they season they grill it, it. It's just really good. It's and I'm an Iowa, like I said, I was an butter. Iowa boy, that's and I eat a lot of good corn on the cob in Iowa, but that's pretty good you know that's a good great point because i can remember my mom was always a big fan of corn on the cob and when you go to the local farms it's it was always like this rating system like was that good corn on the cob nope. peaches and, and cream the best right? corn on the cob nope. yeah so it's it's never disappointed right nope i love it that's but not that's easy to do right it. it's not easy to, to nail that corn on the cob really nope uh, they put a ton of butter on that too. They oh, don't. they bake it. <laughs> they dip they it dip down, down in butter. butter. And then they, put the, then they ask if you want the spices it. on it, and they put the spices on it only if you want it. Of course, you have that spice. It's, yeah. The word is decadent corn on the cob. It is decadent. It's, 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 it's like you throw you in. want the spice. Yes. <laughs> you got it. It makes it. it it's so it salty and thing. so good. It makes yes. the corn. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't even matter that it's like all over your face. That's, oh, yeah. like, that's part of it. <laughs> they don't so, ever give you enough napkins either. All right. As if we haven't done this before, but tell everybody where you get the corn on the cob. It's right before you go into to the uh, safari. There's mm-hmm. a little food booth there. And yep. ironic enough, they used to have the best snack there. That was the jalapeno pepper pretzels. Oh, and they yeah. got rid of it. Ah. So now they have the best snack mm-hmm. there now is the corn on the cob. So all right, don't ever take that away, Disney World, because Please we will don't. revolt. No, I no. just looked it up, and you can find the recipe online for the spice rub. Really? Um, yeah. All right. So I'll just lot. rather pay somebody else to do it. I know. It's, <laughs> it's always better when it's done for you. <laughs> it's always better at Disney World. So, and they got to throw in my German Werther's German. Caramel popcorn. I yep. had to get four or five more bags of that. So did you find it in Magic Kingdom though? I could not find that recipe in Magic Kingdom. I saw regular popcorn, but it wasn't the Werther's. Because I heard it was in Magic Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be at the confectionery. It didn't, it didn't say anything about Werther's. I saw caramel popcorn, but it didn't say Werther's. And it wasn't ah, in that, it wasn't in that so, wax Daniel. bag and yep. stuff. So. I gotcha. Yep. But I got a, like three or four more bags, I think, at Germany. To take some home? Um, actually we are back on keto diet. So I had to eat it before I got home. <laughs> you, we cheat, were like, you cheat on vacation. Yeah. Well, of course we weren't on oh, keto. I'm glad we to hear much, that. Messed that up on vacation. I'm glad to hear that, Daniel, cause I'm going to cheat on vacation too, coming up in oh, June. Oh yeah. You, you can't be on diet when you go to Disney world. No way. <laughs> All right. Let's bring on Amanda Lamb has been quiet, but she's here in the background. <laughs> hey, Amanda. Hi. Um, do you want me to talk about my three favorite foods? I absolutely want to. Now, <laughs> did you go all alone on this trip or who did you stay with? So I traveled um, alone, but I stayed with Tori Hunt and we stayed at um, Port Orleans French Quarter, which was my first time there. And I loved it. Oh, you had the best roommate of the of everybody. Tori is, yeah. we're all a big fan of Tori Hunt. How, how can you not be a big fan of her? She's amazing. And, how cool like, was she to away. stay with at the French Quarter? You really hit the jackpot. I know it. It was it was great. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. She's so she's out in Disneyland doing her what, what do you call it? Chef training, physical fitness test, <laughs> <laughs> carrying bags of flour or something. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, French Quarter. So, <laughs> what'd you think? We've talked about that in the podcast, you know, exhaustively. Yeah. So since I normally travel with you know my family of five, that resort is out of the, uh, it's not an option for me. So I was really excited to get to stay there and I see why everyone loves it. It was a really great place. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. All right. Tell me you were with a chef and you're out testing Disney food. What was some of your three favorites? 
Well, before I say this, I had a root canal the day before <laughs> I went on this trip, which I do not recommend. I was in like a ridiculous amount of pain that whole weekend because there was a there was an issue that had to be fixed when I got home. I've been anyway. down this road myself, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was I was very sad at the foods I couldn't eat, like even the jambalaya I got, <laughs> and it was so good, but I could only have like three bites of it because I just hurt. But yeah, yeah. Eventually, I was able to eat some food and. At Boma, the sticky buns and the mustard separately were. Wait were, a minute. Sticky buns at. Was this breakfast? Yes, at breakfast at Boma, the sticky buns, like a cinnamon roll with like a praline topping on it. Yeah. Delicious. Was that Favorite in the dessert thing. section over there? Dessert, breakfast, it's all the same. <laughs> like the left of the buffet. So I guess. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Nice. Sticky buns. I didn't, you know what? You know, I'm a big fan of cinnamon buns in general. Mm -hmm. So, where do they rank in the cinnamon bun family of yummy stuff? So, I think that the sticky buns from Boma are at the top. Only <sighs> thing, like right below it, would be the garden grill. Right mm -hmm. below it, but sticky buns still come out on top. This is fantastic news. <laughs> This is big time news, Amanda. Thank you so much for that. Because, you know, I love Boma, but I haven't, I've not, I've done, Judy, did we do Boma once for breakfast? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. One time. Yeah. We're doing it for dinner this time, not breakfast. Well, there you go. So. There you go. Hey, you know what? I should ask them for some sticky buns from breakfast, though. You might have You some. should try it. I love that. Thank you for that, Amanda. <laughs> All right. We got good news here. What else? So the mustard at Boma that goes on the honey, I mean, not on the honey, on the ham, <laughs> the mustard was very good. Mustard on the ham. Was, yeah. Was the ham like really tender too? I don't really remember the ham. <laughs> I remember the mustard. What was so special about the mustard? We mostly put the mustard on tater tots too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Really? Mustard, I, you know what? I'm I got a, big... a whole plate of tater tots just to eat the mustard. Those so tater, tater, tater tots were special. To, those tater tots, yes, they there were. Was, there was something those special on them. Really good. They were good. There was All some right. spice yeah. or something on them. All yeah. right. I love mustard and I love tater tots. So I'm really interested in this topic. So, <laughs> what was so good about the mustard? Like, I'm a huge mustard fan. It I, tasted like it had a curry seasoning in me. Um, I, someone else might be able to I'm explain it say, better. Horseradish, yeah, definitely horseradish. Wow, it was like a sauce. I was trying to remember the spice, but that's what it was. It was horseradish. Yeah. Wow, it just had a, enough of a flavor that it just brought out yeah. all the seasoning in it. Yeah, I had a piece of ham with the sauce, and I went back and got a full plate of sauce <laughs> and just things to dip in the sauce. I didn't care about the ham. You guys, you guys are just like hit nailing this because. You know, I love sauces and Disney World has, has just, you know, we talk about the bread service or all these little plates and stuff. And, oh, my gosh, this is fantastic. Tater yeah. tots. We love our tater tots, too. And now, now we've got mustard sauce to dip them in, too. Wow. Amanda, fantastic. You got another good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nomad Lounge. Speaking of sauce, you have to get the ribs at Nomad Lounge, and then you dip those ribs in that sauce, and you, like, let it soak in there. You guys are killing me. You, now you're going to my ribs? Are you kidding yeah. me? Oh, my God. What? And they were soft enough that my, my mouth could handle it, even after that rib <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to think. I've, I know they have a certain kind of rib at the Nomad Lounge, but, and yeah, so what kind of ribs are they? Um... What's the name? You remember Korean? Nope. Oh, no. oh. Uh, yeah, I think they might have been Korean ribs, but because they they kind of had an Asian barbecue sort yeah. of flavor. Oh, Rebecca's looking them up. I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> she'll fill us in. Okay, we're only like three people into this, and I'm dying. <laughs> you know, I've lost like eleven pounds, but I'm in trouble now. Man, that was fantastic. Did you have more? You can cheat if you want. Yeah, cheesy grits at Steakhouse Seventy One <laughs> was my. They have that cheesy my, grits at Steakhouse. Is that breakfast too? I did have it for breakfast. I think it might be the same grits that come with that bacon and eggs appetizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's but good they were know. very delicious. Wow. Why do you stay quiet? 
Manda, because that was fantastic. <laughs> I like to Manda's listen and all take about the food. <laughs> that was <laughs> all right, Rebecca. You got a, a big time. You got to come through for us now. Well, we got Rebecca Rubin. We give her the <laughs> audience. I don't think the ribs are on the menu. Hello, everyone. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait Holy a minute. Sweet. If you happen from Nomad, you have to look from Tiffins. I'm, I, yeah, I, Tiffins. I went there. Okay. I'm, I'm there. So there's a... Rebecca, you obviously though. know that we do not care if it's on the menu or not. We I think for it's it on anyway. the menu they put on the table, but it's not <laughs> that's on the special online menu. menu. Yeah. The I menu think that's that has true. The popcorn mac and cheese on it. Uh-huh. That's the only important menu. All right, Rebecca, give me three fun, yummy things you had on this trip. All right. So I put Jigo first. Oh, nice. That was really good. I had the duck flatbread and the boboti mac and cheese. She's going signature on you, Amanda. <laughs> then La Cellier. Sam and I somehow wound up there after our four park challenge. <laughs> oh, nice. Good finish. Just somehow. We planned to end up finish. there. Yeah, we did. It was just a weird choice for the two of us, and neither <laughs> one of us got steak, but it was really good. <laughs> But I will say loud, louder than we were expecting. Why would a vegetarian go to the steakhouse so, in Canada? Interesting you ask that question <laughs> because we have been trying to decide where we're going to go after our four park challenge to celebrate. And we were talking about like places we either hadn't been or hadn't been in a long time in Epcot. And I pulled up the menu when we were talking about it. I'm like, this looks amazing. They had a plant based option that looked so good. And then for probably the week leading up to it, we kept pulling up the menu and I'm like, I don't know. I know I was really excited about something on this menu. I don't know what it is because nothing on this menu looks exciting to me. We're like, what are we going to eat? Second guessing your choice. The thing that was like sticking out as the plant-based option was like these dumplings. (laughs) And I just kept being like, there's no way I got that excited about dumplings. Like I... I just didn't. And now that I'm saying it, I still don't remember what I You ate, ate. the chorizo meatballs. That's right. That's right. That's right. Plant-based uh, chorizo meatballs, which uh, were delicious. And we each got our own poutine. You, Rebecca, you're not a vegetarian, though, are you? No, but I try to stay away from meat as okay. much as I can. All right. I think we should, uh, for the next G3, have this four-part challenge added. I, <laughs> I 100% agree with you. That would be a... Like after the big weekend challenge, I, I'm I'm with you, Daniel. Hey, save the save the G3 planning to next week, though. All right, Rebecca, on your four part challenge, did you Uber between parks or did you use no? We used all four types of transportation. Ooh. We did it we all the way in. We we dropped a friend and we picked up a friend throughout the day. <laughs> we lured someone with the promise of corn. <laughs> Absolutely guilty. They said, we're going to Animal Kingdom to get corn. Do you want to go? Yeah. Well, we're doing four parks too. Do you want to go? Well, there's corn, right? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> All right, Rebecca, you got another two or three? Yep, so we went to Yak and Yeti, which I know everyone really likes. I really wanted to try the ahi tuna nachos. They were delicious, and we got a couple of other appetizers. And then the last thing, Amanda said it already, but I wrote the Boma mustard sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Two votes for Boma mustard sauce. If you don't hear anything from this podcast tonight, it's Boma mustard sauce. Write it down. It was that good that I put just the sauce on, not the whole Boma breakfast. I think that was just okay, nice. but that mustard sauce. Can I get it at dinner, mm-hmm. though, Judy? Can you look that up probably, for me? Or... I, I, yeah, you probably, you probably with the prime rib. It was with the carving station. Yeah. yeah. So I will, definitely there for dinner. I bet we will it report is. back. Judy, as my travel agent, please um, go call, call the chefs down at. I'm a travel place. advisor, not agent. Uh, I'm a travel it's advisor. Okay. Make sure you get a full bowl. Yeah. Yeah. The mustard sauce. Look at our table I'll look, I'll look like, it. what else could we put this mustard on? Like, what <laughs> could I get more of so that I could have this mustard? I am all about this. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much. Selena. Hi, hi, geeks. The crowd was going wild there for oh. a little extra. <laughs> 
Selena, how, how are you? I was so happy to see that you and Jackie were at this geek, geek me. It made my heart just, I was just so excited to see you guys. Yeah, we, we had a great time. We made a pretty quick trip um, and we stayed off property, which, you know, was fun. So <laughs> we were at a holiday inn trying to keep our price down a little bit, but we, we made it happen and we had a great time. I understand. That's it's all OK. So tell me three yummy things you had. You guys like to eat when you guys are in the parks. Uh, well, we ate four days worth of food, probably. So <laughs> on a three day trip. I'll try and keep my list brief, but um, <laughs> my number one thing, we went to Disney Springs on Monday and we did Polite Pig, which I had never done before. I'm not a huge barbecue person, but I loved everything. We got um, we got sliders, which I think had pulled pork and fried chicken and brisket, yep. which were all fantastic. And then we got three sides. We did potato salad. Um Brussels sprouts and mac and cheese, and there wasn't a bad bite on any of that. So I'm all really about good. polite pig guys. Yeah, everyone's everyone's like nodding their head. Even vegetarians, right, Samantha? Yes. Yeah, we're big yep. fans. We all had fun. Bob was saying, yeah, everybody's. Oh, but have you been there? Okay, I've been there. there. I've been there three <laughs> times, and yeah. this last trip, I ordered six market sides. They have the deal where it's like three for one plate for like $16. I'm like, yeah, I need two of those because I yeah. need everything. So good. We got to get the word out about Polite Pig. I'm all, I'm all about that. Good job, Keep Selena. it to ourselves and, you know. And just... Hey, you know, it's a big Disney World podcast universe. I can. We can share. We'll be fine. <laughs> So um, another thing that we did, so we did Brown Derby, which I've been to before, but I got the filet and it was just fantastic. I mean, it was just melt in your mouth. I split it with Lauren and we had probably everything on that menu. I feel like we were just ordering it up. We were there all night, but the filet was definitely the standout for Wait me. Wait a minute. You were there all night? Well, I felt like we were there who's all night. We? It's a long time. It's a couple of hours. Who's we? Yeah. So our table was Rebecca and me, Jackie and Selena and Lauren. Okay. And the poor, our waitress, Courtney, was absolutely lovely. And she came back about six times before we had made any types of decisions on literally any. <laughs> Two hours of the Brown Derby. But event. no hamburger. No but hamburger. No hamburger. No, we, yeah, were, we were upset about that, but, yeah, the, but the filet made up for it, I think. Filet mignon, yeah, that's my choice too. Good job. <laughs> um, so I have one more good thing, but let me, I just have to make a note. So when we did the sand and gel in... I said, oh, well, I don't want to just eat cake. I'm going to get a little bite of something. I'll just order guacamole. And apparently the guacamole comes with pork rinds instead of tortilla chips. All right. Which was an interesting choice. I, I tried to just eat them the way they were, and it was not my favorite thing. We ended up having to get chips, which was an extra charge. <laughs> so just a, a heads up, if you go there and you think you want guacamole, just Make sure you're right. getting chips with them. Other than that, I know people are guacamole snobs. So how was the guacamole there? It was good. It was fine. I mean, right. it was not my favorite place. I don't need to run back to it. Yeah. I think, Tony Ann, that cake was probably the best thing I've seen on that menu in years, to be honest with you. We had fish tacos there in October that were very good. All right. There you go. We'll throw them a bone. And I had fish tacos there. I didn't like it all. So. <laughs> and Judy taking them back down. <laughs> the best part about the cake was watching the people trying to open it. Oh my up. gosh! It was uh -huh. You needed like a, a saw it. or something, and like <laughs> they definitely needed to have a sharper knife with it. Except yeah. for the, the smart table that figured out that you could just lift it. <laughs> what? Who is that? Bubba's table, because Tori yeah, I was. Know. Oh, okay. Uh, I, but the, let's be honest. The third it's table. It's yeah, because I, Tori, because Tori looked at it and looked at looked at how it was constructed and figured out that you just looked it up. Yeah, but, but then breaking almost, it was half the fun. Yeah. yeah. It was good inside, though. All right, I'm going over to my next guest, Bubba Mac. Hey, geeks. Hey, Bubba. My my vegetarian guy, I think. Yeah, am I the only guy only vegetarian? Two vegetarian listeners on this? We only round? got two. We only got two that I know of. <laughs> and my daughter. I'm sure there's That's more three. out there. That's yeah. three. <laughs> Let's not forget Lindsay. 
Dude, what did you have uh, to eat that was yummy on this trip? So I have a backup plan because I knew someone would claim the corn from Animal Kingdom. And so I'm going to start with the corn from Epcot, the savory garlic uh, corn that was from the Flavorful Kitchen. Uh. I, I had it twice. You'll notice there's a theme here. I have, I have a thing with corn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, did. I had it twice when I was there. And uh, it was really good. It's, it's There's like a breadcrumb coating on this like thick garlic spread that, oh, it is so good. It, and the first time I had it was perfect. The second time they just like kind of covered it in the breadcrumbs and it was a little much, kind of overpowered the corn, but that was delicious. Really good. Corn on the cob? Um, no. Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Always. The word is getting <laughs> out over to Epcot. Yeah, that's, that's where we first clinked cobs. <laughs> oh, that's where that <laughs> picture was from, really. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I think there's a there's a few cob clinking photos out there. Oh, there's uh, some that, there's some salmon. on the dark web that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's somewhere out there on that side of the internet for sure. <laughs> And then also, you know, another favorite of mine was the um, the croissant from the uh, booth in France. It was a goat cheese and herb croissant, and I mean, it was amazing. I I, I kind of expected it to be not as full as it was, but okay. I sliced this thing open, and I mean, it was just it oozed out. It was like a lava cake when I cut it. it was just this awesome garlicky goat cheese filling that was incredible. Okay, you know we're all about cheese and bread, right? So yeah, <laughs> so like something right up our alley. It's definitely something you don't want to miss for sure because the the croissant was still flaky and and you know crisp on the outside and nice and warm. It was it was really really good. So this is a booth for, sure. for yep the flower and garden. Yep. Okay, Judy, write that one down. We're going. Wait, I'm, I'm still trying to look up the corn. Where'd you get the corn, Bubba? <laughs> uh, the flavorful kitchen. The flavorful kitchen. Yeah. I did the same spot thing, Judy. Yeah, I have figment. My list for next weekend. My yeah, it, corn. It's close to it's close to figment. It's when you're first, <sighs> yeah. you know. Oh, the corn's over there. Okay. But um, the, I'll write yeah. that down. Flavorful kitchen. It's like yeah, it was right next to Starbucks until like two weeks right, ago. Right, right. The Starbucks that just closed. So the croissant though is in the French area, French, French area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice, Bob. Okay, give me another one. Uh and then last, I got it. It's an old standby. I said it on my last report, and I'm gonna go back to it. But uh Rosie's All American Diner for the vegetarian lobster roll. Oh, yeah. It is amazing. It was something I was so nervous about. I was just really apprehensive about trying it the first time. And I absolutely loved it. And, so and it's went made back. of artichokes, right? It, it's hearts of palm is okay. what it is. So right. heart, hearts of palm and celery and apples and like in, uh, like an old bay dressing, a, a Glenn Kessler special. All right, where is this, and how do they get away calling it a lobster roll when there's no <laughs> lobster at all in this thing? I think that you get to use your imagination a little bit there, Jared. It's the <laughs> yeah. Old Bay. It's Old Bay, I think, that kind of, you know, uh, well, makes it I'm die. from Old New England, and we don't have any Old Bay, so you're <laughs> work work with me here. Well, I, you know, I, I wasn't on the naming committee for it. And to, to be honest, if it wasn't called a lobster roll, I would probably have been more into trying it the yeah, first right, time. Yeah, I get you. It's like <laughs> yeah, false so, advertising. Yeah, but I don't know how you, you know, hearts of palm salad roll also doesn't <laughs> sound delicious. <laughs> um, You're okay yeah, that they tricked good. you. You're okay that they, they, they got one by you, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the first time I had it too, I had, um, I had my sunglasses. I set them down on the tray that I got from the restaurant and I finished my sandwich and I was just, I was dizzy from how nice. delicious this thing Where was. Where is this? And, Where is this, Baba? Uh, Hollywood Studios. It's down by, uh, down by Tower of Terror. So this is something they have all the time. We're not talking about yeah. a, a festival oh, treat yeah. here. Yeah. It's been there for a minute. It's down by the Tower of Terror? Yep. Wow. Like across from like the Beauty and the Beast show. I know what you're talking. Right I know. Yep. I I'm catching what you're throwing. <laughs> yep, yep. And and I'm going to cheat and throw in an extra one there because the 50th anniversary cookie there is also incredible. Ooh, um, what's it's that? It's like a pre it's a pretzel shortbread 
with like a Nutella spread and then some sort of jam. I don't remember. And then like a white chocolate topping, I think is what it was on it. But that's, that's the pretzel shortbread cookie could be a dish on itself that I would I would pay six dollars for. Nice. You had me until the Nutella thing, which gives me the hives, but that's just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Other that's than that bummer. part, I probably would like it. Yeah, it's delicious. Nice. All right. Andy Hoffman, are you ready to give me your three favorite yummy things? I am. Are you ready to hear them is the question. Hey, what do you think I'm here for, dude? I know. All right. <laughs> so in no particular order. I'm going to go with the filet I had at Chico. Chico, that yes. That was really good. You guys did a signature at Chico. That's a that's kind of an out-of-the-ordinary signature restaurant people don't know about. Glad to hear they're back. And let me tell you, if they have, if you have a specific temperature in mind that you would like your filet cooked to, they will do that for you. You know, they have a fantastic wine menu there too, right? Yes, did not have wine. I, I had probably a sangria or something girly. Andy likes girly drinks. Do. I do. I know I he do. likes to impress the single ladies club. I'm all aware of that. <laughs> it's how I got in. It's solo ladies. <laughs> ladies. Solo ladies, <laughs> not single ladies. Oh, sorry, Wendy. I'm <laughs> still we not a rumor about Wendy. Um, <laughs> she finally, she perked the, up right up on that, didn't she, Andy? <laughs> she did. She did. And then the ahi tuna nachos from Yak and Yeti, those were fabulous and we picked up a fabulous friend named noreen who joined us after she was double fish and drinks at restaurant asaurus so she was a wonderful and delightful addition to our uh, our team what's so great about the ahi tuna nachos this comes up it's often. Delicious. yeah it's they're just delicious and they're just a combination you might not always expect and it's something unique to i think disney property so it just makes it more enjoyable Yak and Yeti. Get the ahi tuna nachos. Did you get the fried wontons, Andy? For dessert? I, no, I forget. We had like two we other. We were really I, full. <laughs> what were the other two ones, two items we had, Rebecca? We got the fried green beans. They're like panko crusted fried oh, green beans. Oh, those are so good. Then we had oh, then we, dumplings. Yes, and we took Tony Ann's the recommendation and ordered the firecracker shrimp off menu the half order of the shrimp yeah. and we had fried rice i think maybe or was that somewhere yeah else? i can't remember i feel like there was rice no they've got some really good fried rice at yak and yeti yeah and i feel, I think like, we did. I feel I like, like there was rice i like that too all right andy got another one yep the, i really enjoyed the the breakfast we had at the sword sorority house on saturday morning of, of dapper days that was just fun just having all the company and we were all sitting around just kind of socializing before we all went. So that was a, that was a fun time. And then I'm going to add some um, drinks to my list. The tropical sangria at, at Skipper Canteen is really good. That's my favorite. The cool headed monkey at Jocko mm -hmm. And I met Samantha and Rebecca at Abercadabra bar on Monday before we went to Chico and we like, would you like a espresso coffee martini? I'm like, no, I don't do coffee. Just order me something girly. And the girls delivered, and it was, Nailed it. It was very tasty. <laughs> I don't know what it was, what was it? but Houdini it was good. Something. Houdini, Houdini something. something. Yeah. But okay. also best espresso martini. Yeah, that's on my Anyone list. Anyone that likes an espresso martini, wow. go there. So and many. finally, Varieties. I got my fancy caramel apple, and I remember to bring it home, and I got to eat it this time. I'll have to add the espresso martini to my list. It's really good. We learned about that in the Disney Day Drinking Club. <laughs> Andy, did you go back to the Riviera and get your caramel apple? Um, I, I did not. Um, <laughs> I, I did discover. Go back ago? to the first question. Yeah, back to the first question about the interesting parts of the resort. Travis and I stayed at the Dolphin. It's interesting going to the Dolphin at one in the morning, with seeing their lobby bar, or even at one thirty, and how the hell is that? Amber alert! Amber alert! No, or silver we, alert! Uh, no, we have a tornado warning. Oh, is it tornado warning? Yeah, I'm already in the basement. So it works out. I'm already the there. Oh, 
Um, it'll pass. It's nothing. Um, <laughs> knock on wood. As the house rises into the <laughs> air. If his roof exactly. goes off his house, guys, just let me know, all right? <laughs> Then you guys know I did, I went out, you know, <laughs> spending time with you nerds. Um, Andy's driving um, a bicycle. Exactly. <laughs> following him. <laughs> but standing at the Dolphin and seeing a, a live, like, lobby compared to going to any other lobby at any other, you know, Disney hotels. I mean, we, let, we leave uh, uh, Sam and Rebecca's at the sorority house, and it's deader than a doornail. Like, there's... There's not a ghost. There's not a mouse in sight. And then, yeah. you know, you go here and it's like, oh, this is this is fun. So Tony Ann's idea of getting the G3 community over at the Dolphin Lobby Lobby, right? lobby area, right? Right. It's, ha- it's, a- it's happening. And there's couches oh, yeah. and yeah. there's a bar. Oh, and- I'm all mm-hmm. great. I'm digging what yeah. you're throwing there because I did that for my conferences. And it's definitely a hangout spot for us. Yeah, right, Andy. I mean, that's that. Oh, there's yeah, a little yeah. lounge bar there that's really convenient too. So if we did it in the evening, yeah, and it's a nice, it's a nice setup, and it seemed to be uh, a pretty, um, pretty lively and pretty yeah. fast yeah. paced. Some good bartenders yeah. there, and the staff doesn't doesn't mind. They don't care. Yeah, they're, they're used to big crowds. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. I, Tony Ann, you know, she sometimes she comes up with a good idea. You know, every once in a while, she every once in a while she throws us a bone. <laughs> Nice. All right, Andy, thank you so much. Jen Moynihan win. Hi. Hey, Jen, dear. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I love How are your you? ears. Thank you. They were a gift from my lovely friend, Noreen. I was very happy to receive them on my about a week after I came home. It was, it was wonderful. I loved it so much. <laughs> uh, she knows how much I love purple and shiny things, so it's, it's perfect. <laughs> So tell me, did you have something yummy on this trip? I did. Um, Unfortunately, some of my yummies were already spoken for, but I will go ahead and give another shout out to corn. I have like such a love affair with corn. I've been like kind of, especially Bubba and I, like all the entire trip, we're just like gushing about corn, like (laughs) relentlessly. So um, the simplest things, isn't it funny how the simplest things are some of our favorites? Yes. I mean, that animal kingdom corn is, I, I have to, it's, I make a plan. I go out of my way for it every trip. No, you do. Yeah. So didn't disappoint. I uh, love that. So I'm just going to throw the corn out there again. And I also loved the goat cheese croissant. Um, it was like glistening with butter and just gooey and warming and, but not like disgustingly warm like for florida heat it was just like it warmed my soul when i ate it it was just lovely i love the suggestion i'm like (laughs) judy write that one down goat cheese like croissant thing over when when ken's getting that crepe thing i'm gonna get the goat cheese croissant thing it was definitely worth the wait the france line tends to be very long it's like france yeah and I sometimes will skip over it because I don't really feel like waiting in it. But that was, I mean, I had wonderful company with me. I was there with Bubba and Lauren and it was, it was absolutely worth it. I think my eyes closed when I ate it. So <laughs> that says something. All right. Is is this an influence of all the friends that you have hanging out with you? I, w- I want the food like just to stand on its own, you know? Yeah. Jen? I mean, fair point. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling you might be influenced by all your friends. I mean, that's, that's a very <laughs> strong possibility, but I don't know, like what could be better than sitting with friends and eating a delicious cheesy right. croissant right next to Remy in these like beautiful gardens. It was I mean, yeah. just wonderful. So true. Yes. Um, so those were already spoken for, but I wanted to give another plug for them. I think one that hasn't been talked about that I, I love Gideon's cookies. <laughs> I always make a plan for like the first day of my trip to get a couple of cookies. And then I like nibble on them throughout my trip for breakfast every day. Um, but I've been sleeping on the peanut butter cookie that's at Gideon's. I had this wonderful conversation with one of the people who works there just about like what they love. And they said that the peanut butter cookie was their therapist. And so I said, (laughs) well, I have to eat this now. And I literally had that entire cookie, like 
the next morning. And I usually like nibble on them. So that was delicious. That's what's the full favorite. name? What's the whole thing of the cookie, the peanut butter? Because I love peanut butter. So what's yeah, the whole thing called? Is it- I think it's called the peanut butter crunch cookie. Yeah. And it's a peanut butter. It's a very nicely sized peanut butter cookie with also peanut butter, like morsels on mm. top. And then inside the cookie, there's also peanuts. So it's soft with a little bit of crunch and no like chocolate. a little, no chocolate. Although for May, yeah, I don't, I think unfortunately you'll miss it, but for May they had their special cookie. It was so good. It was their dark chocolate cookie mixed with their peanut butter cookie. Yeah. That would be was, my deal. That would oh be my, my gosh. deal. But no, I, I like loved peanut it so butter, much. So. Yes. Now, I don't know. Judy, ate all my Gideon's cookies. I only ate one. <laughs> I want to get a we reaction. We brought like two dozen Gideon's cookies to the kickoff party. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy, so, so Wendy brought me here. some cookies. And you, and you gave me the cookies and cream and it was delicious. Oh, mm, good. That, that's me. Well, that was from Wendy, actually. Well, thank well, you. I, like, I brought welcome. a bunch home and I'm, I have just a few left because you can freeze them. I cut them into quarters. I'm like serious about my Gideons. I cut them into quarters. I put them in the freezer and then I just like take some out and I'm, I almost am out of them. So my heart will be very sad here You're shortly. not alone on this podcast for people who do this, Jen. I've heard yeah. this before. <laughs> Yeah, I bet I, they I mail order. Freezer. Can you order them from Gideon's to send they home? They do not. They do not. Oh. I I looked it up because I I have a problem with Gideon's, <laughs> but they do not unfortunately mail them because they want to like protect their product, which I I get. Uh, they don't want it like melting in the mail or whatever. But so I just have to love it when I go to Disney. They're very unique because they're big and thick. Yes. Wendy, if, if we can get to Gideon's in June, we can bring some home and freeze them and then bring them to Albany. That sounds good to me. I'll try it. That's a great yeah. idea, Judy. Yeah, yeah. Mine's it's not four idea. hours long. That's right, a brilliant Jen. idea. But Judy, um, you, know, you know, I just wanted to tell Judy, if, if you get on the list and they call you back, as long as you go back that day, you could probably get in the lot. So if, if you're going to be at Disney Springs for something else, just get yourself mm-hmm. on the list. Yeah, we'll do yes. that. We've that done that true. before, and they've told us that you can just go as long as you're as long as they called your basically as long as your virtual queue came up. Okay, they'll let you in. Yeah, no. that is a good tip. I I often will go. And then have dinner uh, and then have dessert at Gideon's is typically what I usually end up doing. Um, so I guess the only other thing that I had that wasn't mentioned already, I had a spiced tuna bowl over at the Nomad Lounge. Mm. Um, I had that twice. So I, I really did like that. The first time I ordered it, the server, I think, was very concerned. She said something in the spirit of like, you know, there's raw tuna on that, right? Like it was a bad thing. And I said, <laughs> yes, I would love the poke bowl, please. <laughs> um, and it was it's very, very good. It's uh, warm. It's got rice. I think there's edamame. There's um, some like ginger kimchi. So if that's like your palate, it's absolutely delicious. Like I said, I had it twice Ooh. and really loved it. I didn't even know I had a palate, but I'm glad you said that. And, and it's a Nomad <laughs> Lounge too, so. Definitely, definitely. That's a bonus. Jen, that is awesome. Thank you so much. And Thank you. So, ladies, we're getting close to the end. I'm going to skip Scott and go to his lovely wife, Karen. <laughs> You're skipping him? <laughs> Scott, his camera's off. Yeah, well, ladies first. Karen Daves from the Mickey File Podcast. <laughs> Tell me, did you have to he's laughing? Now he's on camera. He's laughing. <laughs> Karen, so tell me, did you have something fun to eat down at Disney World? Um, yes. That we haven't heard um, talked about. <laughs> well, actually, they didn't. Um, Tony, Tony Ann and I actually had it. It was the at Spice Road Table. It was the cauliflower. Oh, which yes. Which was... It was delicious. I'm I mean, first you. of all, the, the pieces of cauliflower, it was four pieces and it was huge. They were, they were as large as an Italian meatball. All right. Probably a good description. Yeah. Um, they had a good flavor. The cauliflower wasn't too mushy, but it had a good spice to it. So Tony yeah. and I enjoyed that. I'm all about spice road table. Good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I love this little, like, little really specific things that you guys are bringing. So keep mm-hmm. going. All right, Karen, give me another one. Um, well, it's already been kind of discussed the uh, the cake 
uh, the <laughs> huge chocolate cake in, at San Angel. That's pretty unique. We haven't heard that before. <laughs> they definitely need to bring a sharper or bigger knife if they want you to actually cut through the chocolate. <laughs> if you want to share it with a big group. Right. Um, it was definitely, it definitely meant to be shared with a large group. And yes, I know we could have just picked it up, but it was very, especially inside of it was very good. Um, the chocolate was milk chocolate, which surprised me. I thought it was going to be a dark chocolate because I'm a dark, dark chocolate type of person, but the ganache inside in the cake was delicious. Nah. Um, I'm not an ice cream person, so I didn't have the ice cream. So I like this um, idea, though, to have a little cake, like a fancy, fun thing to do mm -hmm. with a group. That's yes. cool. And it was per I mean, we pretty much devoured the whole thing between the <laughs> six of us. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, what did it look so like afterwards? <laughs> it was, it was uh, pretty much a plate and melted ice cream. And that was a before pretty much and it. after picture would be appropriate. We, we, we did have that. <laughs> And then the last one I enjoyed was at Boma. The first thing when you go through the buffet at the breakfast, it was the ham and the asparagus ah. at breakfast, which, believe it or not, for me, I love that part of it. The asparagus was, you know, it, it was nice big stalks of asparagus. It wasn't too mushy. It wasn't too firm. It was just the perfect consistency. Ah. had a nice flavor. The ham actually had a good flavor. Um, and the fact that they, cause I don't eat egg, egg yolks. So they, um, made an egg white omelet for me. So it was really nice. So it was just nice being able to go back and do buffet again. Uh, you, you had me at buffet yeah. because you know, but you just described it so perfectly because I think a lot of people kind of poo poo buffets because people expect them to be not quite the quality of a sit-down restaurant, but to me, those chefs put a lot of their heart into that. And when you just mm -hmm. said that, when you described that asparagus as being perfect, I'm so proud of them because, right? Because they don't have to make the asparagus perfect. Mm -hmm. and there was a really good tomato on that buffet too. I don't know if any of you. Yes, have I, I love those yeah. tomatoes. Yeah, and, oh, yeah and, they, and they weren't wimpy sized pieces of asparagus. They were. Yeah. Yeah, big monster pieces of experience. Like, I'm not yeah. going to take any abuse of people who don't like my buffets because at <laughs> Disney World they do a fantastic job, and the rest mm -hmm. of you can just you know. <laughs> I gotta hop in here. You know, I've never really been a buffet person, and this was my first buffet experience, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. want to echo Karen's thoughts. That asparagus was killer. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It was so I, good. I totally it get that. that. Like anything to it. I added nothing to it. I just cut it up. Okay. I was like, at first I was going to like, oh, do I need to add something? No, it's got pepper already built in. Oh, my God, this is perfect. Isn't that yeah, it was really good, but I'm just telling you, the mustard put it over the top. <laughs> you should have put mustard on it, Karen. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a simple kind of girl at times. At times. <laughs> Uh, Celine, that's a little stretch in the, your mustard thing, all right, with the asparagus. <laughs> nice. Well done, Karen. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Well, if you're enjoying that episode, I'm sorry. I cut it off halfway through. I'll try to get the rest of it out real soon for you guys, and you'll hear some great stories and interactions that they had. I think Scott Dave comes on next to <laughs> tell his favorite foods, too. I'm looking forward to listen back to it myself. It's been a while since I recorded that because I was down in Disney World. It's been, you know how it is when you're getting back from a vacation, just getting into the routine of things. It's not easy, especially when you get a little bit of a sickness from your trip. I had a sinus infection is the best way I can describe it. Well, you'll hear all about that. Sooner or later here, we'll record our trip reports from the 50th wedding anniversary trip with Auntie Judy, Uncle Ken, Margita. And boy, the geeks spoiled us rotten. It was, we'll talk all about it. It was fantastic. And I had a, some great geek meets myself, a surprise meetup with Brandy Shields. Big shout out to Brandy and her mother-in-law, Tammy. I love getting surprised, but this was like 6.30 in the morning. I'm walking around Riviera, my first coffee walk with my recorder. These are live recordings that I do for the Patreon.com. Everyone who supports me on Patreon.com, where you can pledge a monthly donation to the show. So I like to record some live recordings when I'm down there on my vacations. 
And who do I walk into is Brandy and her mother-in-law, Tammy, in the middle of nowhere at 6.30 in the morning. And the funny thing to me was I didn't run into any more geeks that particular day. And I was at Magic Kingdom with thousands of people. So this is a really fun recording that I released on Patreon.com. I've opened it up to everyone to listen to. You don't have to be a member or pledge a donation to the show if you'd like to listen to that live recording. Get an idea of what those recordings are because I got more coming. I did a lot of recordings like I usually do. You got the recordings I did in G3, but I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon.com. Enjoy that recording I put out there this past weekend. Go out to Patreon.com, search for Geekin on WDW, and you can listen to a sample of my live coffee walks here about my first day at Disney World and this really fun geek meet with Brandy and her mother-in-law, Tammy. Great intro from Brenda Busher. I didn't have one recorded recently, so I looked back like a year and it was just Really cool that it's, you know, Father's Day weekend and she was in Disney World a year ago with her father, the Grand Floridian. That was a great recording. Great intro from Brenda. And I'd love to have some more geeking intros. They're fun to do. You don't have to be in the parks to do it. Just tell us your name, where you're from, maybe a fun Disney World fact or two about yourself. And you go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole geeking family. Email them to me at kurt.stone at geekinonww.com. And I'd like to thank all of you for supporting the Traveling Tierras. My wife, Margita, and Auntie Judy, they are back from vacation. They weren't really even on. Well, they were on vacation, but they were booking some things while they were on the road. But they really appreciate your business. And thanks so much for booking your trips with Mom and Auntie Judy. Email them at travelintierras at gmail.com. Yeah, we're committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacations. Just reach out to me. If you'd like to do a trip report, I got some lined up here in the next couple of weeks. Got a couple in the backlog, but if you want to book a trip with us, we really appreciate you reaching out to us. We love talking to you guys. It was great seeing some of you down in the parks. I can't wait to do my trip report. And again, I hope all the dads and the geek and family had a fantastic Father's Day weekend. I know I did. Thanks for going geeking on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening and geeking with us every single day. We love you, geeks. Have a magical day, and I hope all your dreams come true. Oh.